In this series of videos, we're going to look at the training process for neural networks. In previous series, we saw how we calculated the values for the neural network, but now we're going to see how the weights to the neural network are actually determined. For neural network training, we basically have training data, and we would like to take that training data and use it to form weights for the neural network that are going to produce the output that we would like. For training, we, if we're training for, for example, the, the exclusive OR, we're going to have this truth table that we've seen many times before in this series. This is the input, and this is the expected output. So basically, the neural network has weights, and these weights determine if the neural network, what the neural network is going to produce for output. So if we send in a zero and a zero for the two input neurons, we want a zero back out. Well, we can think of training the neural network as a sort of optimization problem. Mathematics has many different ways that we can optimize the, the parameters to an equation so that it produces the desired output. And that's really how optimization functions work and how we need to think of the neural network. Think of the neural network itself as one entire function that has many, many parameters. Weight 1, weight 2, weight 3, up to weight i, if there are i weights in a neural network. This is going to produce some output. But what we really want to think of is think of the entire, think of basically presenting this entire training set to the neural network and getting back a number that determines how well these weights produced the outputs. So we would, we would somehow come up with a percentage that told us how accurate the neural network was. So instead of thinking of it as an output, Let's really think of it as a percent or as a as an error. And our goal is to minimize this error. We want to minimize that error. Now there's all sorts of ways in mathematics that we can minimize an error. What we want to do is we will, we will take the training process. It is going to try many, many different weights, and we're going to hopefully come back with a weight set that will give us an error that is fairly minimal. That means that the neural network would be producing output that would be pretty close to the, um, to the expected output, and we would have a trained neural network. Now there's many, many different ways to, to do this in neural network programming. And like I said, most of these come from mathematics. You can basically do gradient descent. This uses derivatives and calculus techniques. And in neural networks, this, there's various ways to do that. There is backpropagation. That is a very, very famous way to do this in neural networks. There is resilient propagation. There's the Manhattan propagation. And then there's other optimization techniques that are based sort of on um, gradient calculations like scaled um, 
conjugate gradient. It's another very efficient way to train a neural network, and it's also a mathematical technique for optimization. There is the levenberg marquardt algorithm. There are genetic algorithms. Again, genetic algorithms, not so much a mathematical technique, although it gets a lot from it, but it is a really a means of taking parameters, the parameters become a DNA sequence, and trying to optimize so that the error is minimized. Or sometimes you produce a score that tells how well the genetic algorithm is performing, and in that case you usually want to maximize the score. Then there's another technique called simulated annealing, which also seeks to minimize the error for a given number of parameters. Let's look at this really outside of the neural network process. This technique is used a lot in science to fit constants to a equation so that the equation is going to produce the desired output. For example, a very common equation that from physics that many people are familiar with is E equals mc squared. This is a very common equation. Many people wear this on shirts and other articles without even necessarily knowing what exactly it means. I'm not a huge physics person myself, but this is saying that the energy produced is equal to the mass of something times the velocity of light squared. Well, this is this will be a big number for a relatively small mass. This is why nuclear weapons are so destructive. Well, we might have wanted to look at this and figure out, okay, we we want to figure out the amount of energy and we want to relate this to mass, but some parameter, and we don't know what that parameter is, is multiplied by the mass squared. Now that's a bit of a leap that we would actually know that that parameter was squared, and there's other ways that you sort of evolutionary break these equations down, but maybe Einstein might have collected sample data, he actually derived this much more theoretically, but if you were doing it from sample data, you would have some values for p. I'm, I'm sorry, you're actually looking for the value of p, but you would have some mass values and some output values that you wanted to fit this equation to. And you would basically, that would become your training set, the the input into this is going to become the mass values and the output is going to become the energy values and you would want to write this equation so that it would produce an error where if the equation is not right it's going to give you different values for the energy than what you had collected experimentally. So you could then use any of these training techniques that I showed you here, and you, using those training techniques, you would eventually arrive at a value for this parameter that would give you the expected output. So when you research or when you read about these different techniques, at least at the mathematical basis, you're really giving it parameters that are going to, you're looking for a set of parameters, the set of parameters is the weights for the neural network that is going to give you the output that you had expected. Now the way almost all of these training techniques work is you are going to, they're going to run through a series of iterations. So if you've used neural network examples before, you've probably seen them go through a training technique where you 
we'll see on the screen iteration. They're called iterations or epochs. One, and then the error might be 54%. Now we're going to see in the next presentation how to actually calculate these errors. There's various ways to do that. And if you ran another example, like the incog examples work like this, you'll see iteration 2, and it'll just dump this long stream of numbers at you. And hopefully this error is going to go down each time. It's each time through one of these training techniques, and almost all of them are iteration based, it keeps refining and refining and refining the, the weights, the parameters, and it continues to minimize the error. So it just keeps on going like this. And it might take many, many iterations to actually get your error to a low enough And eventually, you're going to be at some number. And hopefully, your error is going to be pretty low. And now the idea is you can use the parameters for your neural network, or in this case, for a uh, physics equation that you had determined, and you could feed it values outside of your experimental set, outside of your training set, and hopefully it would produce the correct values if it had been trained with a data set that is truly representat representative of what it would actually see in the real world. So this is neural network training. We're going to, in this video series, look primarily at the gradient descent type of training, and we will see some of these others in later videos. But we'll start in the next part with looking at how you calculate the error, because we've got this error. This error somehow has to represent all of these training items, what the expected output, what the difference between the expected and actual output was. And there's several different ways to calculate this error. So we will take a look at that in the next part.